Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, the first thing we need to do is grab some contracts, because right now we don't have anything lined up. So let's head to Mission Control here. Uh, now, we'll just go through them. Uh, surface outpost on the moon seems a little bit daunting for five Kerbals. Might be a little bit too much for us right now. We barely got a tiny little probe on the moon safely. Uh, visual surveys of the moon. Um, EVA report at the surface obviously uh, is something we'll need, and plan a flag that we have to first be able to get into orbit around the moon and then return, obviously. Uh, science data from space around Kerbin would be easy enough, but not worth the time. Um, atmospheric scans, uh, probably worthwhile, but uh, uh, tedious. Uh, it's more like something we would do with a plane, except for the surface pressure reading that we could send a probe on. So maybe. Uh, I'll think about that. Visual surveys, uh, this is all surface stuff, so we'd have to land Kerbals on Kerbin, which is tedious. Visual surveys of the moon, well again uh, here we've got a uh, surface sample here, so that would entail landing a Kerbal on the moon. So lots of stuff entailing landing a Kerbal on the moon, but position satellite, we've done satellites already. Uh, new orbital station around Bop. I don't even know where Bop ended up. And 12 Kerbals? Wow. Build a new orbital station in solar orbit. That's clever. 12, 12 Kerbals. Explore Gilly. I don't know where Gilly is. Um, where, uh, we have to orbit. We have to land on it. Hmm. I, I should check out where Gilly is. Well, you can see all the, the contracts for the satellites, but... We've also already got quite a few satellites up, so... Bop. Gilly. Okay, so Gilly is Deimos. Could be interesting. Positioning a satellite around Deimos could be interesting. So I'm gonna say eventually exploring Deimos. It's really hard to hit Deimos because it's so tiny, but... Uh, okay, uh, but, but we've got seven max contracts, and I don't think this will run out. And positioning a satellite in orbit around Deimos. Ooh, very specific orbit. <laughs> That's going to be fun. And a five-year duration. Well, we'll give that a go. Let me get rid of the not interesting contracts. Maybe I can convince them to get rid of this one. New surface outpost on Gilly. Uh, that's ambitious got two geostationary satellites but uh, they are two different locations that they have to keep line of sight with. Those are very very lucrative but I'm not exactly pressed for funds. I could probably launch quite a large rocket with what I've got. Build a new orbital station in solar orbit. 12 Kerbals. Well, we'd have to do that before building orbital station around Bop. And solar orbit. The thing is, since they haven't specified what solar orbit, it's technically easier than building a station around the moon, right? All you have to do is eject it out of out of uh, Earth's sphere of influence. You don't have to then get into orbit. You see, uh, so the moon takes about 4,100 meters per second of delta V. Uh, this would only require about 3,400, 3,500. So it'll take less delta V to do this, but we need a pod that can support at least 12, I mean we have to have a string of pods that can support 12 kerbals, and I don't think stacking up the command pods, though interesting, uh, would be, uh, so what kind of pods do we have? Uh, usually the big canisters are in here. We've got a curb can, uh, you know the hitchhiker can is what I was looking for. Narrow body airliner fuselage is non RP0. Narrow body air, airliner fuselage long is non RP0. Curb can, crew capacity 1. These would be very helpful though, obviously. Crew capacity 17. But, you know, whatever. Um, we do have the Apollo docking mechanism drogue as a docking port. I guess that's why it's allowing me to get the station contracts. The problem is, I don't have the other end of it. I don't have the thing that can dock with it. 
So I'd have a this docking port, but I wouldn't have the the probe that goes uh, that works with it. You see, will only works will only work with the Apollo command module probe. And I don't have the command module probe. Okay. So that's interesting. We don't have anything. So uh, yeah, let's go to pods. Bonanza cabin. Crew capacity six. It also has a very interesting form factor. Obviously not meant to go to space. <laughs> Obviously not meant to go to space. However, very noticeably, uh, no non RP zero tag. Let's just get it. It's not very expensive. Oh, part disappeared. Is it safe? Oh no, it's there. Okay. All right. Well, obviously the command pod Mark One. This conic cockpit uh, also works. The Bonanza cabin is real cheap compared to this. This looks. This doesn't look very good. Well, let me unlock it anyway, since it's a command module. And if we gotta do planes, that looks horrible. No, I think it's safe to say I'll never use just this, just because it looks absolutely horrible. Um, who, why, wow. Anyway, um, Condor, non-RP0, Curlington Model 87, non-RP0, non-RP0, non-RP0. I'm, oh, no cost, wait, uh, yeah, no cost. So technically these are okay, but I've already deleted the textures to save RAM. Also, uh... At least this doesn't have a reaction wheel in it. These have the overpowered reaction wheels in. So technically they're, they should be non-realism overhaul. Because realism overhaul doesn't do these uh, overpowered reaction wheels. So this is, these, this is illegal, actually. Um... Mark 1 cockpit, RP0 no cost. I should pick that up, it's better than that kind of cockpit anyway. Uh, same, same idea. So, I mean, obviously cockpits are not meant for space. But there's nothing stopping me. We, we don't have to tell the people who, who accept, uh, who uh, gave us the contract that it might not be safe actually putting people or curvils in here, right? So, really, this is a station supporting 12 curvils, right? Oh, let's not actually send them, though. Let's see if we can get a more legit sort of pod, though. Let's go to the, to the tech tree. Oh, there's the hitchhiker storage container, non-RP0. Okay, so you're going to let me have the Beechcraft Bonanza in a space program, but you're not gonna let me have the Hitchhiker Storage Container, part not supported by RP0. Wow. And the docking ports. Well, I'm gonna unlock this anyway, because I want the docking ports, and I have no idea why we can't have docking ports. Um, unless I can find the Apollo Module Probe. Oh, there's the uh, docking mechanism probe, and it's uh, it's apparently RP0 compatible. Well, if I can have that, I have no idea why I wouldn't be able to use the docking port. I mean, it's just a matter of lack of convenience. The fact that we have to have, uh, you know, a mating pair, if you will, instead of just having them being androgynous. Yeah, I'm, and these do have the penalty of being much heavier. So, I mean, you have greater flexibility in that they're androgynous, but at the cost of being much heavier. I mean, this is only 0 0.036 tons, uh, whereas these are 0.2 and 0.25. Yeah, I think that's logical. And they've barred me from so many parts, so I think... Uh, oh, is this... Nope, also non RP0 crew cabins. That would be well, that would have been a nice one. Anyway, I'm researching that. 
And I'm researching the two docking ports here. I actually like the Apollo launch clamps as well. Maybe second gen capsules, it would make sense. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, Apollo command module. And the Mark 1-2 command pod. No, oh, that'd be nicer. Okay. Oh, and the mobile processing lab is not RP0. Okay, well, I'll research this. Wow, 1.05 1 million? The Paul command pod's cheaper. What makes the Mark 1.1-2 command pod so much better? It's heavier than the Apollo Command Module. Apollo Command Module allows control of vessels up to 100 tons. And this command pod doesn't. I think I'm just going to send the Beechcraft and Anza up. How can avionics be okay? I, I don't think... Uh, hold on, let me get the Kerbals out. That's what's causing it. Avionics still okay with no Kerbals in? Oh, I haven't picked up that contract yet. Silly me. Well, definitely looks like I'm going to be doing that one. I mean, obviously, putting a orbital station in solar orbit, I didn't want it to be very functional in the in the first place. There's just uh, this is more of a matter of um, seeing the capabilities of our launch system, let's put it that way. Still can't believe that these are... It must be a mistake that these are actually... RP0 compatible. Certainly a lot of care went into making sure that other things were labeled not compatible. Okay ladies and gentlemen, I've decided that we're not really going to be putting a station as such into into solar orbit. Yeah, we'll tell them that we're putting a station into solar orbit, but that's a really stupid idea and I figure that anybody that comes up with a contract like this uh, has to be a little bit gullible uh, putting 12 uh, facilities supporting 12 Kerbals into solar orbit for no apparent reason uh, we have a much smarter idea in mind what we want to do is put a relay satellite into solar orbit something that can extend the range of our existing missions um, perhaps facilitate communications with Mars when uh, the part of Mars that we are interested in is not facing Earth, they might be facing this particular satellite. And so that's what we want to do. And to that end, I've put uh, many antennae, uh, our best antennae, on this. Uh, one will be facing Earth, one facing Mars, and one constantly tuned to our active vessel. And I've got many solar arrays, and what you'll notice is that as long as this top side of the vehicle is facing the Sun, the solar rays will have full solar input. I've also put uh, two in a V configuration on the tail because it's a Beechcraft Bonanza. And so uh, we've got those. We've got uh, reverse facing one kilonewton thrusters that actually should be higher in tech level. Uh, but uh, those are just uh, just in case. Not, not really concerned about that. But uh, just for verisimilitude and to convince these people who want uh, orbital station in solar orbit, we've put a token amount of food, water, and oxygen, uh, enough to support 12 Kerbals for uh, 8 days, so that's not bad. Uh, won't be long enough to help them at all, but uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, and then we have a little 20% uh, utilized tank there. It's mostly for structural purposes to attach the docking system. Uh, the, so that's a 5 ton system we've got there and the reason it's 5 tons is largely because I wanted to test that our launcher would be able to launch 5 tons into solar orbit and we'll talk about that in a sec but uh, all the solar panel is necessary because not only does the communication drop power but so does this avionics package. I'm not relying on these cabins to provide avionics just to be clear. I am relying on this to provide avionics, so I'm not going to assume that they actually can provide control. Um, so yeah, communications, the avionics, uh, but the Bonanza cabins uh, take uh, one unit per second of electric charge, so I have to supply that as well, even though they're completely useless. I'll try and turn them off, but I'm not too sure I can from in here. 
Uh, so, yep. Otherwise, we've got antennae, obviously, and so we're all set. We can generate power and everything. One thing I should do is action group the solar panels. So, yeah, that's there. Uh, we need an extra controller. And so I've got an extra Agena AVIX package. Now remember the Agena doesn't have the SAS. So underneath this satellite dish here, I have placed one of uh, these early controllable cores. And this early controllable core does have SAS. So uh, we'll have SAS throughout this. And there we go. We can package that up. Um, I don't know, maybe some struts could be helpful. Okay, so otherwise this is a semi-new launcher. It's not really that new. It's uh, to a larger form factor. It's a uh, four meter fairing up there. We've got the RL-10 here uh, and you can see the stats for that. And then we've got the J-2 here and again you can see the stats for that. Uh, but most importantly we have our first F-1. Now I told you before that I had developed a launcher with an F-1 and that the problem with it was that the thrust weight ratio was too high and that th this is the one and so we've got too high a thrust weight ratio here uh, we've got a little bit of an uh, I'm I think that once we drop the fairings we'll have enough Delta V but right now it's not reading enough Delta V to eject this into interplanetary space I'm hoping it will be alright the thrust weight ratio on the second stage starts out a little bit lower than I'd like but we'll see if that works out We'll see about controllability. There's a lot of question marks here. But, yep, otherwise, uh, this is the launcher. And our goal today is to A, test whether that works, and B, test whether the probe works. And uh, fulfill the contract, obviously. Um, not a pressing thing, fulfilling the contract, but it'll be interesting. And it certainly led us to create a very interesting satellite. All right, so that is the idea. Let's take it out to the launch pad. Throttles up, SAS is on. Hopefully with only one engine at the bottom it won't create too much lag. That's me crossing my fingers there. Uh, so here we go. Uh, lighting the F1. And launch. Nice sound. I trust we'll get a nice plume from it. One thing you'll notice pretty quickly is that this doesn't give too much better performance in terms of payload capacity than the rocket with the H 5H1s at the bottom. And so that was a uh, point about it. There are other benefits to having this system though. For one thing, I don't anticipate the same oscillation issues, but we'll check that out. Of course, the H1 version had to have the vernier thrusters and all the gimbal being shut down and all of that. I don't think this F1 will. Obviously, we don't have a particular launch window we need to hit. We just need to eject this out, get to escape velocity, and we're done for the contract. And really, for our purposes, all we need is for it to be ending up in a substantially different orbit than Earth itself. Up oh, there's the plume growing. We don't have any side boosters, so heating and no capsule on top, so heating should be all right. I'll just continue heading down here. Well, the first stage, which is the new stage of this rocket, really, for the Antarixa rocket, seems to be doing its job excellently. No gimbal problems, no oscillations, no worries. <laughs> Serious separation motors. J2 is ignited. Okay, so the intention is to have this second stage re-enter and uh, RL-10 actually get us to orbit. And it's looking pretty good right now. This stage could use a little bit of RCS thrusters just to prevent roll. Okay, fairings are off. 
and safely so. A little bit better performance. This is a odd way to have Beechcraft Bonanzas. Apparently they, they make for reasonable satellite buses, who knew? Now the position of my little one kilonewton thrusters isn't particularly good to have when the solar panels are out. So I'll have to remember to retract the solar panels before firing those thrusters just for safety's sake. Right now though I'll extend the solar panels. So our Bonanza has sorta of kinda of wings going to lock the tanks on the payload. Once we fire the RCS thrusters on the third stage, I don't want them getting consumed. Now from the bottom side it looks far more decent. Going to immediately target Kerbin slash Earth with this dish. Avgas. Ah. Didn't notice that actually it contained gas. Should have dumped that. Doesn't matter. We were testing this launcher for five tons anyway, so. And we were bringing up dead weight in the form of life support. From some angles, it looks legit, and then, and then of course, from any angle where you can actually see the cockpit windows. It looks a little bit weird. There's something vaguely Top Gear about it. Uh, uh, taking two bodies of a Beechcraft Bonanza and stringing them together like this. Yep, definitely, definitely a very Top Gear thing to do. Sort of like putting a Reliant Robin as a space shuttle. Okay, that's out. <laughs> really loud separation and ignition. We'll get RCS on this job. So little RCS ports there taking fuel from here. Okay I think we'll just burn out from here. So uh, pitch zero. Actually let's just hold prograde. We're gonna start going down a bit but that's fine. Uh, this might be a little bit early. But uh, having a little bit of skew is probably a good idea because it'll get us into a different orbit. If we go straight in line with uh, Earth's orbit, then we're gonna end up in more of Earth's orbit. There. But uh, we can skew it, we can, we're can. we probably gonna get some inclination on it. It'll be good. Considering our Solar panels can't be getting the best possible sunlight. It looks like our electric charge situation is good. Though I haven't activated all the antennae yet. Okay, we've made orbit, but we just continue outward now. And uh, just to be clear, this is the first and last time I'll be using the Beechcraft Bonanza trick. I'm not going to build any further space stations using the Bonanza cabin. Uh, this was a special contract. I want to build a moon station, I want to build a Kerbin station, but we'll do that without using this particular trick. We'll use actual capsules at the very least. Uh, and I guess it will have to be capsules because all the other cabins are not compatible. We'll use uh, compatible cabins. We will have to use the, the docking ports, the, uh, specifically the NASA docking system that we've got at the back of this here. Yes. It's called NASA docking system. I think it should be okay. All right. So, and that's one that is uh, realism overhaul compatible. So, I think it should be all right. All right. So, yeah, that's what we'll be doing. We won't be using these anymore. This is just a one-time fling to make up for. I, I just needed something a little bit more relaxing compared to what we did last time, which was tense and disappointing. So, yep. And there's nothing quite as... Somehow, somehow the Beechcraft Bonanza does give the impression of a very relaxing shape. So anyway, there we have it. 
and I'll come back to you once we have reached escape velocity. Okay, a weird thing has been going on. Uh, for some reason, the delta V reading has not changed. However, I am losing vessel mass and losing fuel. So hydrogen and oxygen is depleting properly. So uh, no, no failure there. But for some reason, Mechjeb is not reading my delta V going down. This is not a problem as long as the engine depletes of fuel at the right moment. But it's sort of puzzling why Mechjeb is having this issue. I think it might be the RAM limit. I think somewhere Mechjeb doesn't have enough space to do its thing. This might be a might be an issue because I I am I'm at 3.3 gigabytes of RAM right now, and we know it usually conks out at 3.5. And even though I say 3.3, uh, that's not a very good indication sometimes. Okay, we are approaching escape velocities here. Uh, fuel is depleting nominally. Our delta V reading is not so nominal, but not a huge problem, like I said. And that's escape. Let's see what kind of orbit we end up in. Gotta let it keep burning. Somewhere between Earth and Mars seems reasonable. Actually, I think I can shut down here. Yeah, let's just shut it down. This seems like a different enough orbit. Well, let's get out into interplanetary space to fulfill the contract. Now, on the side that's farther away from the sun, we're not going to get quite as much solar input. That's annoying. Maybe I should have brought it closer in rather than further out. But let's see how much we get from this. We'll be ditching uh, this core, and, oh not that core, uh, this, the core that's shielded under here. Okay, no, 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 you're not rotating the way I wanted you to. But yeah, I think I should have been in a closer orbit than fling it out all the way there. There's also the curious fact that even though this shows a drain, the electric charge, when we go to it, shows a net increase, if anything. Oh, now it's showing a drain. Okay, I think we completed the contract. Yep, solar orbit station is complete. Easy as that. Now our generation and drains seem to be balanced. Anyway, let's ditch the this module here. I don't think I'm gonna change its orbit now. Okay, off. Okay, let's try that again. Oh no, wait, I forgot about the signal delay. Okay, uh, use, oh, uh, unlock, ah. Forgot, uh, have to unlock the tank. Where are you, tank? Anyway, there we have it. And we'll tune the top dish to active vessel. And so everything should be all set. One to Mars, one to Kerbin, and one to Active Vessel. All right. Well, it's a thing. We tested a semi-new launcher. At least we tested out our first F1 engine, and that's worthwhile. And we fulfilled this contract with this crazy, crazy looking relay satellite. And we'll look forward to more ambitious stuff in the next episode. Alright, this is more of a relaxing episode. Still don't know what's going on with the Delta V there. But 5 tons into solar orbit was successful. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.